three last resorts, two healthy bodies, three to one bar work are among the prices on this week's three to one. Now, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, as always, everybody. Welcome to the big Saturday game show, 3 2 1. Your Saturday treat you just can't beat. And our theme for you this week is the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, the Roaring Twenties. It was in the early 20s, of course, that uh, Henry Ford flooded the market with his motor car. Of course, motor cars have really improved over the years, haven't they? Oh, they have. I saw one the other day, exquisite. Fabulously designed dashboard, beautiful big rear seat. That's a glove compartment in the front and a love compartment in the back. <laughs> I've got a theory, though, you know. I want to visit Tokyo. I want to see whether there are as many Japanese cars over there as there is over here. Don't you? <laughs> you would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to come along and meet our little Iron Inquisitor. That's my little mate, Dusty Bid. Here he is. Come on, Dusty. <laughs> Oh, yes, I see. See, you brought your dog with you again, eh? That's garbage, his dog. <laughs> well, yes, look at his tail wagging. Don't start leaving any of your rubbish around here, garbage. <laughs> it's a booby prize in this dusty bin. I must say, it is a great car, Dust, and I do like the front of that. I mean, that's the, that's the famous flying lady. Solid silver. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, it could have been worse. Could have been the dog. <laughs> But, of course, as you all know, he represents our booby prize. If he's won on our show, all our contestants take home is a brand new bin. That's all they get. We start, as always, on 3 to 1 with the 1,000 to 1 quiz. Each couple gets a chance to go for £1,000 each. Let's hope they do. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Without any further ado, let's meet the people. They didn't show. We wouldn't have a show. Our contestants. <laughs> oh, yes. How do you do? Oh! And Linda, the Roaring Twenties. What a dress. Yes, Fabulous. it's lovely, and isn't it? And where'd you get that? That's super, Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. Anyway, who are couple number one? All right, we've got Dave and Pat Scott from Shipton in Norfolk. Ah, thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Dave, you're an electronics engineer and you maintain printing machines. Where is that? Where do you do that? Um, all over East Anglia, do Norfolk, you? Suffolk and Cambridge. Quite yes, a bit of travelling. Mm -hmm. You're London an ex-press ex photographer and now you do wedding photography. Any interesting stories? Well, yes, I did do a... It was quite a few years ago now. I'd done a wedding, um, quite a nice one, produced a lovely album. Went round to the house and just outside was the removal van. They were getting divorced. You've got to speed up. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose neither wanted custody of the pictures, did they? Well, they, of course, they paid for them anyway. <laughs> Main thing. That's oh, right. lovely. And Pat, I mean, how about your wedding? Did the photos come out all right? Yes, yes, but they're only in black and white now. They're all in colour, aren't they? Oh, they are. Well, yeah. do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and you met Dave when he was a judo, judo instructor in the REF. So it was judo, then marriage, and now you're a typical couple. That's right. Arm lock, wedlock and deadlock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have your questions. Which one of those three do you want to take? Number two. Number two. OK, then, Pat, that's fine. You know what happens here. We want you to answer alternately. Ladies first. We let you have one to start with, OK? Two ways we stop you if you make a mistake or run out of time. And I do have to accept the first answer you give me, so be careful with guesses. And if you don't know an answer, just say don't know or pass. I'll go on to your partner with the next question. Good luck. Question here is about people whose names are usually preceded, preceded by a title. We will give you a name and we want you to give the title by which they are best known. Now, the name Hailsham is preceded by the title Lord. We'll start you with that one. Hailsham and... Lord. Richard Attenborough. Sir. Gaddafi. Pass. Sarah Armstrong Jones. Um, lady. Margot Fontaine. Uh, lady. No. Oh, no. Well, she is a lady, yes, but she's a dame. Dame Margot Fontaine. Sorry. Never mind, never mind, you can't win them all. Gaddafi, well, I don't think anybody wants to know that yeah. one, do they? <laughs> Colonel, of course, it was Colonel Gaddafi. But three there gives you £30, so it's not a bad start, is it? 30 quid, <laughs> lovely. Off you go with Linda. See you in round two as we welcome couple number two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Caroline. I've got to say, it's a cracking outfit, Thank too, you. isn't it? Eh? Yes, it's lovely. Listen, I know the wardrobe do a great job for Thank you girls you. each week, but Splendid. you've got to go in there and have a good look, too, haven't you? Yeah, oh, yes, we yeah? do. Yes, we, we have a bit of a choose, too. Who, who's couple number two? We have Pete and Elaine McCann from Liverpool. Ah, yes, the pool and blue's got to be in Everton, yes? That's right, Ted. Uh, Pete, you're a lecturer. Where is that? Uh, Chilwell College. Uh, and Elaine, you're a careers officer. Part-time careers officer. Yes? Uh -huh. yes. You met on a tour of the Guinness factory, and you reckon you were both drunk. Actually, Ted, uh, she looked very nice after 12 pints. <laughs> 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 All right, let's have the questions. Which one are you going to choose out of those two? Yeah. Three. 
You want number three? Okay. Same procedure, you know, answer alternately. Ladies first. And if you're not too sure of the answer, say don't know or pass. Okay, good luck. The question again is about people whose names are usually preceded by a title. We will give you a name and we want you to give the title by which they are best known. Now, the name of Donald Coggan is preceded by the title Archbishop. We'll start you with that one, Donald Coggan and... Archbishop. Antonia Fraser. Lady. David Owen. Pass. Desmond Tutu. Bishop. Carrington. Lord. Leonard Cheshire. Sir. No. No, Leonard Cheshire was a group captain during the Second World War, uh, one of the best we had in the few. And David Owen, of course, Doctor or the Right Honourable, you know, but not done too bad. Four there gives you £40. <laughs> not a bad start. Off you go with Caroline. See you in round two. Let's say hello to couple number three. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yes. Look at that. I love all that, that casual gear there. Yeah, Our pillars aren't come out the, the window, mate. <laughs> Who's couple number three? We've got Malcolm and Linda Davy from Leamington Spa in Warwickshire. Oh, yeah, that's a smashing page, right. isn't it? Yes, nice. I like that very much. Malcolm, you're an assistant transport accountant. That's right. And what does that entail exactly? Uh, well, I work for a local authority, the County Council in Warwick, and uh, it's various things, a uh, bit of finance, a bit of administration and so on. Linda, you met Malcolm when you responded to an article he wrote in a paper about a marath marathon running. That's yes? right, yes. So you met within five weeks, you were engaged, the yeah. sprint. <laughs> Six months later, you were wed, the jog. Now you've been finding out what marriage is all about, the hurdles. That's right. <laughs> yes, Let's have it, shall we? Thanks, Linda. OK. Last envelope means that's the one for you, but, of course, you do get the free choice in the next round. Yeah. Good luck. Question is about people whose names are usually preceded by a title. We will give you a name and we want you to give the title by which they are best known. Now, the name Peggy Ashcroft is preceded by the title Dame. We'll start you with that one. Peggy Ashcroft and... Dame. Ian Paisley. Reverend. Stephanie of Monaco. Princess. John Paul II. Pope. Keith Joseph. Sir. Miriam Stoppard. Pass. Robert Runcy. Pass. Longford. Lord. Hirohito of Japan. Emperor. And Khomeini. Khomeini. Ayatollah. Ayatollah Khomeini. That's yes, right. Robert Runcy was, of course, Archbishop. Robert Runcy. And Miriam Stoppard was. Doctor. Doctor. Yes, she's a doctor. <laughs> You've done all right, though. Eight gives you 80 pounds. What a nice start. <laughs> Good. So. At the end of our first round this week on the quiz, we've got couple number one, that's Dave and Pat, on £30. Couple number two, Pete and Elena are on £40. In the lead at the moment, couple number three, Linda and Malcolm are on £80. <laughs> that's nice. OK, okay Linda, yes. here's your free choice, Linda, this time. Which one? Three. Three for you this time, and for £80 for each correct answer. Very good luck. Question is about islands and the countries they are part of. We will give you the name of an island. We want you to give the country of which it is a part. Spitsbergen is part of Norway. We'll start you with that one. Spitsbergen is part of? Norway. Right. Ibiza. Pass. Sky. Scotland. Crete. Greece. Corsica. Pass. Nantucket. Pass. Bali. Pass. Sardinia. Pass. Honshu. Pass. And Heligoland. Sweden. No, not a bad try. Though. <laughs> I'd have taken a guess at that one. I really would. We see it all the time on the weather maps. It was West Germany, that was. Honshu was Japan. Sardinia is Italy. Bali, Indonesia. Nantucket, the United States. Corsica is French, France. And Ibiza is... Spain. Yeah, they've been there enough. What have you got? Three there, though. You got £240, which is not bad. <laughs> Off you go with Linda. And we'll welcome back couple number two. Yep. Now then, Pete. Now the lady. What one are you going to choose this time? Number two. Yes. Trust you enough to let you choose. So you're going for forty pounds for each correct answer. And the same question about islands and the countries they are part of. We will give you the name of an island. We want you to give the country of which it is a part. Prince Edward Island is part of Canada. We'll start you with that one. Prince Edward Island is part of Canada. Isle of Wight. Uh, Britain. Manhattan. USA. Sicily. Pass. Minorca. Spain. Corfu. Greece. Martinique. 
Pass. Zanzibar. Pass. Frisian Islands. Pass. And Java. Indonesia. Right, what a good guess. You took it and had a, you came off right. Well done, yeah. <laughs> it was the last one. Good for you, Pete. Lovely. Frisian Islands were Holland and West Germany. Oh, they sort of split them there. <laughs> Zanzibar was Tanzania. Martinique is France. Corfu, well, you got Corfu. Sicily was Italy. So how have you done? £240. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Off you go with Caroline. And we'll wet the back. Once again, our last couple. Couple number one here. That's, that's David Bell. Thank you. The last one. That means that's the one for you. And of course, you go for £30 for each correct answer, and the question, again, is about islands and the countries they are part of. We will give you the name of an island. We want you to give the name of the country of which it is part. Okinawa is part of Japan. We'll start you with that one. Okinawa is part of? Japan. Capri. Capri. Pass. Mallorca. Mallorca. Pass. Tasmania. And Australia. Staten Island. Pass. Kos. Kos. Pass. Silly Isles. England. Gozo. Pass. Sumatra. Japan. No. No, not a bad... You've got to have a try. Yeah. That one is Indonesia. Now, what do we get? Gozo is Malta. Kos is Greece. Staten Island is United States. That's in New York. New York, of course, is Spain. And uh, Capri is Italy. So at the end of that, what have you got? You've got three. You've got 90 pounds. You. There you go. You. 90. So, at the end of this week's quiz, couple number one, that's David and Pat have got 90 pounds. But joint winners of our quiz this week's couple number two and three, Pete and Elaine, Malcolm and Linda, both on 240 pounds apiece. <laughs> Yeah. Not my greatest subject yeah, in the world was geography, not. but uh, yeah. it's, again, it's not easy when you're standing here. But there's the ninety pounds, of course. There you go. I'll give you the money. Okay, thank you. You do that, Linda, it's and lovely. take thank care you. of him. Worth nearly as much as yeah. those pounds. I can tell you that. You've been super, super couple. Thanks thank a lot, Pat. And nice you too, Dave. You too. Stay here. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. The Roaring Twenties. Don't go far. <laughs> And this week, the Roaring Twenties is our theme. And the two couples we've got this far in the programme right now are Malcolm and Linda, who are from Leamington Spa, playing against Pete and Elaine. Pete, OK? <laughs> from Liverpool. Now, you know what happens, folks, at the end of each one of our items we're about to show you. One of our guests will come here to the table, leave you a clue object, and they'll read you just a two-line rhyme, all right? When there are three here on the table, you have to choose one to select, to reject, if you get through the elimination question where Dusty Bin's waiting for you. So, so item number one, then, of the Roaring Twenties, we're going to go over to Park Avenue in New York. A lovely party is going on. A number is the Joints Jump and the famous Fats Waller number being danced by the Nigel Lithgow dancers and featuring Roy Gale. They have a new expression along old Harlem Way. That tells you if a party is ten times more than gay To say that things are jumping leaves not a single doubt That everything is in full swing when you hear somebody shout Here it is, y'all! This joint is jumping, it's really jumping Come in, cats, and check your hats, I mean the joint is jumping The piano's thumping, dancers are bumping This here spot is more than hot, in fact the joint is jumping Check your weapons at the door, be sure to pay your quarter. Burn your leather on the floor, grab any body daughter. The roof is rocking, the neighbors knocking. We're all bums when the wagon comes, I mean this joint is jumping, yeah.
jumping, yeah, it's really jumping. Woo. Every Moses on his toes, I mean, this joint is jumping. No time for talking, it's time for walking. Grab a jug, cut a rug, I mean, this joint is jumping. Get your pig feet fit and gym, there's plenty in the kitchen. Who's that just came in here? Woo! Look at how he's switching. Whoa! Great. What a, what a routine. Marvellous routine, that really was. He did a great job, eh, Roy, there? Roy was great. Terrific. In fact, he's so tired, he's had to go and lie down now. That's why I'm here. That's why he sent you on. <laughs> That's eh? right. They were a great routine, great kids. Nice Thank to you. see you again. And what do you bring here for the clue? Well, I've brought a Bowie knife. Uh -huh. I think Brian Rogers left it for me, but <laughs> there it is. I wouldn't do that. Bowie <laughs> knife is the clue. And what's the rhyme say? The rhyme is, James is fit and well. In short, take this and you may not be caught. That's the first one. And I don't suppose we've got much idea right now, have we? Have we back here? No, don't worry, you're not alone. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigel Lithgow. Thank Good you. Good luck, Ted. Nigel. Thank Thank you. You. Good luck. See you soon. Lovely. Ah. Well, maybe not back here, but there's a bit of bubble going on over here. What's happening? Any idea? James, not at all. No? no. May not be caught? I don't know. Let's have item number two. Of the Roaring Twenties, and it gives me a great pleasure to reintroduce this lady. She was with us on the very first 321 we ever did. Here with a couple of numbers from Some Like It Hot. The very talented Faith Brown is here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Smashing to see you. It was the very first one, wasn't it? We That's did. right. The yeah. very first one. How's Kara? That's what I want to ask. Kara? Yeah, Kara. Yeah. She? She's great. Mm. What are you leaving with a clue then? Well, Kate? I'm. What have you got? See you, Jenny. Oh, no, great. It's, a, it's a Jemmy, actually. A Jemmy? Yes. All right. I'm leaving a Jemmy. Jemmy, the clue, and That's the rhyme it. says. And what? the rhyme is if you sink this as soon as you get it, you'll surely run wild but regret it. 
<laughs> Item number three of the Roaring Twenties. And here's another number from an American musical which goes into production this winter. The song is called If You Want Something Strong Enough and it's going to be sung by a guy who had such a big hit in Starlight Express, Lon Satin. <laughs> An opportunist can be found on almost every street. He's someone who makes hay from the grass we let grow under our feet. If you want something well enough, you move heaven and hell enough, you will find it, but then find it so it doesn't fall apart if you want something strong enough and you work at it long enough it becomes a product of your mind you work for with your heart if you want something real enough and you've got nerves of steel enough you will get it but don't let it out of your sight right from the start if you want something deep enough you won't have time to sleep enough it becomes a product of your mind you work for with your heart nothing that's worthwhile is ever handed us listen nothing that's worthwhile just like that. Oh, I believe the Lord above commanded us to use the brains he gave us, for that alone will save us. Oh, if you want something right enough, and you're prepared to fight enough, Shout about it, never doubt it, or you'll end up in the cart. If you want something well enough, you move heaven and the hell enough. It becomes your creation. It must cause a sensation, for I say with elation, it's a product of your mind. Well done, so far. Thank you, thank you. Yay. Good number from, from obviously a new musical starting yes. in, in the winter. winter yes. Month. And you looking a, forward to that? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. After three years in Starlight Express. You were now in, I was just going to say, how long were you in it? Three yes. years. Yes. This is our third year. And now. I feel ashamed I still haven't seen it. Now, everyone's got to get your skates They on. say, ah. <laughs> but this new show is called San Francisco Party. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, it's, you know, the, the role that I play in Starlight, it's something like a big Harry yeah. in the midst of all the devastation and all the destruction with the earthquake, you know, the great earthquake uh -huh. back in the 20s. Big Harry comes in and says, in spite of it all, if you want something strong enough, yeah, you can get, don't it. get it. Yeah, lovely. Well, I'm sure you will. Hope. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to go well. What are you going to leave him as the clue then, Lon? What have uh, you got? We have here Broken Rock. Broken Rock. Ah, yes, okay. And can we have their rhyme, please? The name tells you what should be done to this one if this one is one. That is the third one. Ladies and gentlemen, Lon Sutton. All the best. Thank be you. thinking Thank about you. it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, Malcolm yeah, and Linda yeah. are chatting away like a pair of good. Yeah. Let me read the other two again. Okay, item number one came in from Nigel Lithgow. He brought in a Bowie knife and said, James is fit and well in short. Take this and you may not be caught. Right. Now then, item number two was the Jemmy from Faith Brown who said, if you sink this as soon as you get it, you will surely run wild 
but regret it. So have you any idea which one's going to go? Well, we think the first one might be some kind of sports equipment. Uh -huh. uh, gym, gymnasium. Yeah. The second one, I think, the only thing that I sink and regret it is a pile of booze. So uh, <laughs> we think that that might be some... All right, well, what are you going to choose? Come on, you've got to... Pick one to choose. I think the jemmy. You want to get rid of the jemmy if you get through? Yeah. You want to get rid of the booze? You don't like that? I couldn't have it. You couldn't have it. Any more? Do you mean today? <laughs> so, okay, is that okay with you, Elaine? Okay. Yes? Yeah. Fox? Yeah. Sure. Okay, we yep. know that the jemmy is going to be rejected. Whoever gets through the elimination question, which is here. <coughs> Yes, take a deep breath and put your hands, folks, beside the button, now, please. I'm going to start to read. Read the question. When you think you know the answer, you hit the button and answer. If you do answer before you hit the button, I do have to offer it to the other couple, OK? If you hit it wrong, well, we carry on until someone gets it right. Good luck to you. Here we are. This is an American film actor. One of his films was Some Like It Hot. He also starred in The Boston Strangler and The Great Race. Pete goes in. Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis, absolutely right, it was. Yes. yes. <laughs> no? You didn't? Marvellous. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely moment, Pete, when you hit it, and then have I, have I done it for the right reason? But you have. Congratulations, you're through. And you didn't have a clue you said there, Malcolm. Right? Just idea. Never mind, you've done marvellously well. That's part of the show anyway, but we do have the money you won, which there was... £240. That was £240. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's ceramic. That's the big. And of course, take a little look across there, and we have the consolation prize for you. Caroline has these two elegant period style table lamps. Look at those, huh? <laughs> anyway, Linda, take care. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being lovely contestants. You too, Mal. Take Thank care. Give them a round of applause, folks. All the best to you. Bye bye. Okay, Pete, we've done it. We've got to the part of the show that is the toughest to get to and the toughest to get out of. Because now we've got to think about Dusty Bin. But you're okay so far because you've got rid of the Jemmy, which we know is a lot of booze, don't we? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to find out. You can use it. <laughs> we'll find out after the break. We'll be back with you in just a couple of minutes. Three of three, two, one, and the Roaring Twenties. Our theme, Elaine and Pete McCann from Liverpool and Everton supporters got to this part of the show and rejected the Jemmy. Now, have you had any other thoughts of it since or not? Yeah, no, I still think. You still think it was what you said it was. Okay, Faith Brown brought you a Jemmy. If you sink this as soon as you get it, you'll surely run wild but regret it. So, are you going to regret it? Let's, let's have a look. Okay, she brought you a Jemmy or a crowbar. She said, if you sink this as soon as you get it, so what sort of things can you sink in connection with bar, of course, that could mean drink. You'll surely run wild but regret it. Well, if you were to drink this lot as soon as you got it, you'd be certainly really out of your mind. You were right, Pete. Take a look at this. Mahogany finish reproduction double door period style bar cabinet comes complete with glasses for every occasion, two decanters, and a water jug. We also included a complete range of wines and spirits for your first cocktail party. There you are. <laughs> okay, Caroline, it's been rejected. Take it away. It's got to go. Away you go. Thank you. <laughs> now, are you going to be as good on the others as you were on that one? Getting the bin, that's the one you've got to be really clever mm. on. So, item number four of the Roaring Twenties, and once again, we're dipping into the Fat Swallow Songbook with a number, Your Feet's Too Big, written, incidentally, by the Ink Spots. Will you please welcome Earl Oakin? <laughs>
up at Harlem at a table for two. There was four of us, me, your big feet, and you. From your ankles up, I'll say you sure look sweet. From that down, there's just too much feet. Yes, your feet's too big. Don't want you cause your feet's too big. Mad at you cause your feet's too big. I really hate you cause your feet's too big. Likes your face and likes your rig. Man, oh man, those things are too big. Yes, your feet's too big. Don't want you cause your feet's too big. Mad at you cause your feet's too big. I really hate you cause your feet's too big. Cause your feet's too big Your self-esteem was really demolished When I bought you that new nail polish I suppose you know how the rest of the story goes I bought a bottle for your fingers But a crate for your toes Yes, your feet's too big Don't want you cause your feet's too big Mad at you cause your feet's too big I really hate you cause your feet's too big Yes, your pedal extremities are colossal Makes you look just like a fossil Got me walking, talking, and squawking Cause your feet's too big Come on now, walk that thing, yeah I'm gonna stab your way right through the ceiling Got me walking, talking, and squawking Cause your feet's too big, yeah Well, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Well done. Smash it. Good, good to see you. The darling of the Edinburgh Festival, of course. True, true. And what do you leave with these folks here as a clue? Well, apparently they couldn't afford anything for me. I got a lump of wood. Oh. No, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's not true. Uh, the name of this clue, it's, it's the length of the wood. It's, it's called 0.61 of a metre. Oh, OK. That's the clue. That's easy, isn't it? And what's their rhyme say? It says, a bin liner might be initially nice. For advice, in a trice, try the dice. <laughs> now, there's quite a few clues in there somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Earl Oaken, and good luck in the States, Earl. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, uh, mm. What do you say, Elaine? Mm. A bin liner might be initially nice. nice. Does that have anything to do with bin liner's initials? B-L. Maybe British Leyland, maybe... Oh, oh dear. Oh. Oh, not just brought the whole place. family from the pool, haven't you, tonight? Yeah. Could we hear this one again? <laughs> you can hear that one again? Yes, you can, yeah. indeed. Yeah, in case it is jewellery, yeah. yeah. And you want it. All right, this Lon Satin brought in Broken Rock and said, the name tells you what should be done to this one if this one is one. Not a great deal. Yeah. Come on, no. one's got to go. Then the next one, of course, yeah. we're on the final three. Yes. If we win a car, you can have the car anyway. <laughs> uh, that's a promise. So, what one's going? Yes? You're okay on that? Is that all right for you, Pete? That's all right with me. That's okay. It's all right with you. There have been a few rocks back yeah, there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Broken rock, round your ear holes if you don't like it. Right. Okay, you're going to reject this. Long sat and brought in broken rock. The name tells you what should be done to this one if this one is one. Okay? So, it's open now, so it's going to be rejected. Long brought you the broken rock. The name tells you what should be done, but what name? Long? The name of the show or what? To this one, if this one is one. Three ones in that last line, so perhaps a prize in three units. That stick of rock was a suite in three pieces and sat on it certainly would... Well, that's what would happen if you had won this, but you've not, you've rejected it. It's a three-piece suite. Take a look at this prize. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, it's a suite of furniture, all right, but no ordinary three-piece suite. The seating's all sofa-sized, with room for five people on that eye-catching pink and beige upholstery. And that stylish coffee table completes the set and provides the finish for a sitting room you'd be proud of. Ah, yes, and you would have been, wouldn't you, Elaine? <laughs> could you? You really could. There you are. I'm afraid it's been rejected. Linda, take it away, please. It has to go. Oh, yes, you could really have done with that. Well, it's been rejected, of course, and that's it now, then. Ne after the next one, of course, that means the final three on the table, and we know Dusty Bin, if he's not here already, will be here by then, OK? So keep thinking about it, and item number five of the Roaring Twenties. And here is a great number from a great show, Chicago, great film as well. All that jazz, marvellous Grace Kennedy with us, so take it away, Mr Piano Player. One, two, one, two, three, four! Jazz, I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz, start the car. I know a whoopy spot where the gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all that jazz. Lick your hand. And want a brand new start to do a bad jam. Oh, you're gonna see your brains shimmy shake and all that jazz. Oh, she's gonna shimmy till the goddess break and all that jazz. Show me where to pop my girl. I've got to congratulate you on that, that marvellous spot you did at the Water Rats Ball at the Grove. Now, that's got to be daunting. That is, it's a big room. Yes, it's a big room. And when you're working to professionals as well, eh? Oh, yes. Yeah, but you did a good job. Wonderful. What are you leaving here as the clue? I'm leaving you a will. A will? Yes. Oh, that is the last one. And what's the rhyme say? When there's a will, there's a way. On this you can bank OK. OK. That's the third one. Ladies and gentlemen, lovely Grace Kennedy. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
Well, Kate Lang. Can we? You want to hear this one again? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're only going to hear it. You're not making up your mind yet. No. Okay. Earl Oaken brought this in. Item number four, point six one of a meter, and said a bin liner might be initially nice for advice in a trice. Try the dice. I haven't a clue about that one, but getting yeah. hints from the audience, thinking it's a holiday. Bank. 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 Final three Bank. are on the, the table. We know Dusty Bin is here, somewhere. Yeah. Which one's going to be rejected? One has to go right now. Yeah. Okay, get rid of them. Okay. Get rid of them. Yeah. We we'll get rid Everybody of them. thinks, yeah, you don't yeah. like that. No. Because you yeah. said it was I'm sports equipment. Yeah. 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 Yeah? If you've got a hands on that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> is that going to go then? Yeah. Is that okay with you, folks? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty unanimous, that. So it's going to be rejected. The Bowie knife. Item number one, it came in from Nigel Lithgow, who said, uh, James is fit and well in short. Take this, and you may not be caught. How do you do? Let's find out. Okay, the Bowie knife. Nigel said, James is fit and well in short, so what is James called in short? Jim. That fits with Jim Bowie and the Bowie knife, which is what you were on about, Peter. Take this, and you may not be caught. Well, if you take this prize, You'd certainly be so fit, you'd be very difficult to catch. You're absolutely right. Take a look at this. Well, firstly, this gym pack fitness system comes complete with a full instruction course to guide you through more than 60 exercises which the system makes possible. Also included is this electronic ergomatic exercise cycle, which is computer controlled and monitors every step of your progress as you change from Mr. X into Mr. T. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, John Benson, and take it away, Linda. Lovely. Well, Pete, there you are. What's amazing, actually, you've been, you've been very good. You've worked out a few of these here tonight. You were right on that one. You said that from the word go, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, haven't got the I haven't got a clue. Well, you have not got, this is the problem. You haven't got rid of the bin, you know, and you've been so right on lots of them. We've got the final two. Being the final two, I can read them both again, so take notice. And let me yeah. take notice of yourselves. People will give you help. It's entirely up to you what you do. Item number four. This was brought in by Earl Oakin. He brought in 0.61 of a meter and said, a bin liner might be initially nice. For advice in a trice, try the dice. That was that. Item number five came in, a will from Grace Kennedy who said, where there's a will, there's a way. On this you can bank, okay. What are you going to do? For, for advice in a trice, <laughs> try the dice. <laughs> <laughs> Just lucky. <laughs> oh, dear. You might car. be unlucky. I wish I could help you here. I really can't. It's the last two. One has to go. Yeah. Don't go quiet. Is that again. two feet? I think it's about, it's about two feet, yeah. It's only about two feet, though, isn't it? Two feet to stand on. Well, what are you going to do? <coughs> Come on, we have to make up our minds, I'm afraid. I think we should keep this one. <laughs> 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 You're all wrong about the Bowie knife. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to do? There you go. I'm going to toss up. Oh, great. <laughs> now, this we've never had on the show before. I've got a penny. <laughs> no, I've been on, Bastard. Do you really want to do it? Yeah, yeah Felix Bonus, thank oh, you. He's not got a penny, he's, do, he's got 10p. It's all those shows he's doing for Wogan. There you are. Right. Who's going to spin it? I'll spin it. Yeah? Go on. Oh, it's not a double headed one. we get rid of the will. Tails, we get rid of the, uh, okay. the wood. Oh. Okay. Tails, we get rid of the wood. Yeah. Felix? Never let it be said. If it's a lucky one, it'll be worth a drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. That's it. OK. He said, heads, yeah. you get... Yes, it's going to go. Right. Elaine's gone along with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you have, haven't you? <laughs> right. No. Gosh. <laughs> the minute I open it, of course, that's it, folks. OK? Yeah. Right? Yeah, Earl Oaken, yeah. he brought you 0.61 of a metre. A bin liner might be initially nice. For advice, in a trice, try the dice. OK? Oh, gosh, I can't stand this. Earl Oaken brought you a 0.61 of a metre. What could that mean, indeed? What could it mean? Well, a metre is just over a yard or three feet. Uh, that, perhaps this is two feet. That might fit in with Earl's song, Your Feet's Too Big. He said, a bin liner might be initially nice. OK. A bin liner, a hefty clue, or is that too obvious? For advice, in a trice, try the dice. Well, what can you do with dice? You can roll them, shake them, 
or you, in this case of our chap, who has got two feet, throw them. <laughs> Dusty Ben, <laughs> you've done it! <laughs> 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 you've done now it. then. <laughs> Well, yes, I don't ever remember reaction at this point of the show with that going before, but you really did it tonight. OK, Dusty, take garbage away with you. Off you go, the pair of you. have been rejected. Well done. Oh, jeez. There you are. You see, that's all on the toss of a coin. Nobody knew that was going to happen, but it's not easy when you're standing here. Anyone can give you advice, but this, we do know, is the prize you're having tonight, OK? Grace Kennedy brought this in item number five. A will. Where there's a will, there's a way. On this, you can bank. OK. I don't suppose you really care what it is now, do you? Now he's out of the way? Right, Grace brought you a will. She then said, where there's a will, there's a way. Well, if she's already made sure that there's a will here, this prize must have something to do with a way. Perhaps a holiday, but to where? On this, you can bank. OK was the second line. And if you run bank and OK together, you get the first destination, Bangkok. Have a look at this. A scheduled British Airways TriStar will fly you from Manchester via Dubai to Bangkok, the heart of Thailand. The charm and colour of this fabulous city is breathtaking. There's so much to see and to do, from the grace of the traditional dancers to the crowded floating markets. After three days at Bangkok's Hotel Regent, relax for a week on the magnificent beach at Pattaya before you take to the air once again to complete your holiday. Another three fabulous days, this time at the Hotel Regent, Hong Kong. That's it, huh? Now, that can't be bad. That's got to be better than a bin. Let's go and get your tickets. Come on, off we go. <laughs> Better than a dustbin, wouldn't you just say? <laughs> I, honestly, I've been to a couple of those places and it is sensational out there. You're going to love it. And a bit of spending money you've forgotten about. Caroline, how's that? How much? £240. I could buy the green stickers. Congratulations, Thank Ian. You. And I like you too. Mm. Thank you too. Have a smashing time. We know you will. Okay. You've been a terrific. Terrific couple, you really have. That's it, folks, a smashing show, as always, tonight. I'd like to thank all our guests, our marvellous contestants, most of all you for watching. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Have a good time. <laughs> Bye.